time. Hello, judges. My name is Morgan Eckroth from Onyx Coffee Labs, and it's an honor to be representing the United States. Now, today, we'll be experiencing a journey through time, not simply looking to our future, but also to our past. Let's get started. Now, two years ago, hospitality and specialty coffee faced an extinction, where once coffee functioned as a canvas that fostered relationships and excellence, it changed. Service in coffee became sterile and efficient. And yet two years later, as we stubbornly press forward as an industry, facing what we lost is unavoidable. We're chasing progress while looking over our shoulders at what once was. Now today, judges, I wanna challenge you that our future can be found in the past through a renewal of coffee, connection, and resilience. Now, at this time, I'm preparing the shots and then chilling them for your later signature beverage. So in the meantime, settle back and relax. We'll be continuing shortly. I'd like you to also note those menus in front of you. They have information about your later coffees and courses. Continue. We're starting our time today with a coffee that has faced an extinction of its own. Eugenoides, one of the parents of Arabica. This incredibly unique coffee that helped form our modern expectation for coffee was once nearly lost. Forgotten to time before the Holguin family at Finca Immaculata resurrected the species in a lab. Deep in the Andes Mountains of Colombia, this coffee has reappeared through painstaking care and effort. Now, the Eugenoides is certainly an ancient species that has been renewed through technology, and the flavor profile it holds is incredibly unique. It has low acidity and complex sugar development that has been enhanced through natural processing. Because of this, today, judges, I'm updosing to 23 grams in, approximately 36 grams out, at 25 seconds. Now, I mentioned that the Eugenoides sweetness has been enhanced by its processing, but today, we're gonna do so once more, this time with the addition of milk. Now I'm using freeze distilled milk today. It's whole milk that has been frozen and then distilled down to 30% in order to capitalize on the rich and creamy texture you'll experience in the final beverage. I'll be rejoining you at those tables shortly. Now, in this pairing, the fats in the milk and the sugars found in the eugenoides come together to create unique confectionery calls. In the drink, you will taste creme brulee. You'll taste yellow cake batter and melted chocolate ice cream. Lastly, you'll taste praline. This is caramelized butter, sugar, vanilla, and salted nuts. The tactile is extremely thick. It has a heavy weight and is buttery and rich. It has a coating finish like white chocolate.
the Eugenoides is certainly a species that has already undergone a renewal, and yet it faces another extinction today, this time driven by climate change and resulting in low production. Once more, we look forwards towards an uncertain future in this coffee's history. And yet before you on this table is the rare magic of Eugenoides. Now my only drinking instructions for you are this. Once you are done with your evaluation, please take a sip of water. This will prepare you for our further coffees and courses. Thank you and enjoy. Now, extinction is not something that the Eugenoides faces alone. Coffee itself lives in jeopardy and stands in the face of such threats as global climate change and large-scale market shifts. To even begin to offset this, the inherent value of coffee must increase. On this stage, we champion ourselves as representatives of the specialty coffee industry. And yet the question remains, who is specialty coffee for? In the last two years, we've seen increased interest in home brewing, along with passion to move from novice to expert. There is clearly still value to be added to this industry, and finding ways to connect with this new segment will be key in our own renewal. Now, we'll return to that thought shortly, but for now, our journey in flavor continues, this time with a new coffee from Immaculata, the natural processed Sudan Rume varietal. This coffee has been roasted in eight minute batches with a drop temperature of 191 degrees Celsius. This is in order to maintain the Sudan Rume's tropical acidity while still developing it for the rich tactile of espresso. I've dosed in 18.2 grams. We're gonna have a yield of 40 grams at 25 seconds. As I come to you judges, please wait to taste, but do perform your crema evaluation. The aroma of this espresso is floral botanicals. In the cup, you'll find pink grapefruit, a floral rose, raw sugar, it's sweet, but unrefined with minerality. And you'll taste kiwi. The tactile is a medium weight. It is slick and silky with coating botanical oils and acids. And the finish recalls the floral rose. And that kiwi note you tasted transforms into lime for a long finish. Now, as I come around and stir your espressos, I ask that you turn your attention to the screens in front of you. In our efforts to renew as a competition and as an industry, we are armed with new tools and technologies. I want to take you and all joining us here to Immaculata, to the orange blossom fields, and the citrus that grows above the coffee, and to the immense care and effort that has gone into the cup in front of you. Now as I come by and I remove your spoons, I ask you to lift your espresso, take in the sights of Immaculata, and then finally, delight your palate with the flavors of Immaculata. Thank you and enjoy. Enjoy. We 
will continue to face further extinctions as an industry, cracks that seek to splinter and weaken us. It is inevitable, this cycle of loss and renewal. And yet if there is one thing we can look back to and hold on to, it is human resilience. It's the barista who holds tenderness and empathy in the face of industry-wide chaos. And it's the producer who cultivates precious varietals in the face of global climate change. It is a deep and stubborn determination that keeps us marching forward. Our final beverage today is honoring our evolution while celebrating our past. We have 80 grams of the Sudan Rume Espresso, chilled. And then taking from the rich agriculture surrounding this coffee, 30 grams of Lulo juice. Lulo is a lemon-like citrus native to Colombia. We have 25 grams of simple syrup made using a one-to-one -one ratio of Demerara sugar and water. These two ingredients in combination with the espresso's grapefruit call creates the flavors of tamarind and maple. We have 30 grams of salted pineapple juice. The addition of saline creates a balancing effect. And this ingredient, in combination with the espresso's sweetness, creates the flavors of spiced cocoa. Lastly, taking from the past, we have 20 grams of the freeze-distilled milk you experienced in your previous course. This is creating the textures and the flavors of cream soda. Now, I'm carbonating all these ingredients together using a tool called the Perlini. With technology, we are infusing this drink with a lush and effervescent texture. Now, I'll be coming around to each of you shortly and removing those cups that have been left in front of you. Judges, I will now be breaking your espresso cups. This is representing the extinctions we have faced are facing and will continue to face. In times of upheaval, are we as an industry ready to emerge and expand or constrict? It is my hope that the former is true because if we look to the past, we can see this. Coffee itself has survived through continual renewal, and so will we. Now, if I may remind you, those flavors you'll taste in our final beverage. It's tamarind juice, cream soda, maple, and the flavor of spiced cocoa. Now, the aroma you'll get is pungent botanicals with a finish of complex spices. The tactile is a medium weight, yet it can feel lighter on the palate due to the carbonation. It begins slick and juicy, developing into creaminess and finishing with sparkling effervescence. And as a final touch, the national liquor in Colombia is called Aguardiente. It is an anise-based spirit that is often used in celebration. In times past, it has been shared between Onyx and Immaculata in partnership. Because of this, I am spritzing each of your cups with orange blossom water and anise tea, creating the aromatic experience of celebration in the coffee fields of Immaculata. Once more, I ask that you wait to taste. The cups I'm placing in front of you have been remade using the ancient Japanese technique of kintsugi. It's a mending of something broken with gold to turn it into something even stronger. This is coffee. It's humanity, and if we look closely, we may even see the threads of gold woven through our own shared histories. Now, judges, as we part ways for today, I leave you with this. Take a deep breath and look forward to what is broken. Finally, sip from what has been remade. It has been an honor spending this time and serving you. Thank you so much. That's time. <laughs>